Adventures in Fly Time at FlyFishOhio.com. I'm your host, Joe Cornwall. We're joining you today from the Cincinnati Fly Tying Expo. What a wonderful place to be. Fly tying, fly fishing, waiting for the new season to start. We have a great pattern for you today. This is Lou Oatman's Golden Shiner. Let's take a look. Isn't this a beautiful pattern? The pattern itself, a little bit of orange to, imi to imitate the fins, a little bit of white to imitate the belly, a very delicate uh, floss body with some ribbing, a little bit of yellow bucktail veiled by gray hackle tips, a little bit of peacock, and of course the jungle cock eyes. On this particular pattern, those jungle cock eyes are a little bit bigger than I wanted them to be, but it'll fish and we'll have a lot of fun with it. Let's get started. We're going to tie this fly on a Daiichi size 6 model 1720. Now this is about a 3x long down eye streamer hook. You can use any 3x or 4x long. 4x might give you just a little bit more shank length to, to make this work, but you can use whatever fly, the, whatever hook that you have available. We are going to use a rather unique technique on this one as I set this hook up. We're going to start by tying with a white 6 aught thread, and we're going to complete the fly pattern using a black six shot thread and you'll see why in just a few minutes. Now that I have my hook in my vise, let's go ahead starting just about a hook eyes width away from the hook eye itself lay down a smooth thread base all the way to a point right above the point of the hook. This is going to be the thread base on which the floss body rides. So it's very important that we spend a little time and make sure that we lay that in. One of the things you'll notice is as I tied this, I'm holding the tag end up. Each wrap moves that thread against the, the wrap in front of it, allowing me to have that smooth underbody. Now, for the tail, we're going to use a little bit of orange hackle. This is just some orange slapping, and I'm going to take a little bit of that off make a bundle on that, and that tail is going to be about the width of the hook gate. So that's my tie-in point. We'll go ahead and clip that off and tie that in. Get that setting up on top of the hook just the way we want it. Nice little orange tail, a little flash of color. The next step we want to do is tie in a little bit of ribbing. We're going to use some gold tinsel for ribbing in this instance. I'm going to cut off about three or four inches and tie that tinsel right on the top. Now I'm going to advance my thread to the front of the hook, once again, touching wraps to keep a smooth body because I'm going to be wrapping a floss body over this. Now the reason that we're doing this in white is that white floss will become translucent in the water. And I use black thread, when this floss gets wet, the body would have changed color and it would have become gray. We're using a standard rayon floss. I mean, if you wanted to get uh, technical, you could use, I guess, a silk floss. You could be very traditional, but the rayon floss will work if I can figure out where it started. We're going to get eight or ten inches of that rayon floss right there, or nylon floss, if you will. Tie that in right at that front of that hook eye. Now, when you're working with floss, as you've seen from a couple of the other patterns that I've done today, one of the things that you want to do with floss is make sure that you're not running your hands down it too much because it'll fray, and also make sure as you're wrapping it that you're taking touching wraps that are very much perpendicular to the shank. To do a floss body, it does take just a little bit more time. You have to kind of work slowly because floss, to get a really good floss body, is going to show you the flaws that are underneath. Now, I don't want you to worry if you get a couple of lumps or if the color's not right or it doesn't look like it's painted on. You know, there are some fly tires out there that, that can make this look like it was just spray painted onto the hook shank. But in reality, the fish are going to react to the presentation, to the suggestion of life, and to the imitation that you're looking at. And all these exactitudes, well, they entertain us, the fishermen, but they're not necessarily there for the fish. So don't take it too seriously. Have a little bit of fun, but try and make it neat. Once again, try not to let your hands, if you have a lot of calluses uh, on your fingertips, one of the things that I would recommend is wear latex surgical gloves, and that will allow your hands to work with this delicate floss without actually damaging it. I have to take one more wrap back there before I can go back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up that ribbing material. I'm going to take a wrap or two behind the ribbing material. What that does is, if that ribbing should get cut, that kind of locks that in so it doesn't uh, slide off the back of the shank of the hook. Now I'm going to wrap that floss right back up to the eye of the hook again. Once again, nice, 
touching turns. What you're seeing is a little bit of flash, a little bit of shine, something that's natural that's going to be buried inside of the body of the fly and really kind of brings it to life with a little bit of that inner glow. So a little bit of white floss, you could just as easily use white wool and in fact I believe Lou Oatman uh, actually specified white wool as uh, an option on this. Now I've seen this tied with silver ribbing, I've seen this tied with no ribbing, and I've seen it tied with gold ribbing and I've opted today for the gold ribbing uh, because once again this is the golden shiner and I think that that gold ribbing is really going to make it look very quite natural just give us a little bit of shine now it's kind of traditional when you're doing ribbing on a streamer fly like that that you want to have five or six wraps of that ribbing Oop. I just totally blew that one if I was using metal tinsel I'd have had a real problem there but this is mylar so that'll work out well so that's two three four five and six turns of that ribbing we're going to lock that in clip off the excess so all i really need is a couple of wraps of thread to hold that in we're going to clip out the clip off that excess now i'm going to throw a quick whip finish on this finish off with that white thread now to tie in the head of the fly I'm going to switch to a black thread also a six eye so let's start our black thread right behind the hook eye lock that on by wrapping it right up over the edge of the white thread that I just cut off give myself enough space that I can put in the wing and let's start by inverting the hook. If you're using a rotary vise, you can go ahead and just spin it. In my case, I'm going to invert that hook in the vise, and we're going to add a little bit of white bucktail. I'm kind of getting low on that bucktail, but as you'll see, I'm not going to need a lot of it. Pull a little bit of bucktail off of this. Well, what I want to do is I want to have just a little bit of a belly of that bucktail. So I'm going to take some of those long pieces out that are kind of there. There we go. That's going to come back to just about the barb of the hook. So that's my cutoff point. Trim my bucktail. Lock that in. Just one, two, three wraps. That's all I need to lock that in. And I want that to set up on the bottom of that fly. So that's going to be the belly. Now we're going to add the front bit of orange fins to this golden shiner. We're going to use, once again, a little bit of that sh schlappin'. We're going to trim that back. Lock that in with just one, two wraps of thread, three wraps of thread. We have a little bit of an orange fin right there. Now let's start on the wing. The wing on this fly is actually three parts plus a cheek, so there's a total of four components that we're going to tie in. So you do have to use some thread control. We're going to start with yellow bucktail. We're going to take a little bit of that yellow bucktail. I'm going to take it out of the frame here to cut it. I want just a little bit of yellow bucktail, just a little wisp of that yellow bucktail, not much at all. And I want the bucktail, as you can see, to come back to the end of the tail. So that's my cutoff point. Let's lock that bucktail in. One, two, three wraps of thread, practicing good thread control so I, the head doesn't get too big. Now the next step is I want to veil that bucktail with gray and this is a gray rooster neck or a gray hen neck and I want to veil that with a couple of feathers and that's going to go along the side like that covering all the way back to the end of where that bucktail is. So we'll go ahead and strip those out make sure they're the right length lay that onto the side and it's still just a little bit longer than I want it to be. Tie that on with one or two wraps of thread on that side. We can go to the other side of the hook, same thing. Take that gray, measure that down and strip it down. Lock that in with just a couple of wraps of thread. Now we have both sides veiled with gray. Let's add a little bit of peacock curl on the top. I'm taking some strung peacock curl. Now really for a fly this size, this is size six, four or five pieces is all that I want. Even those up. Here's an easy, easy way to even up your peacock curl. Just pinch the ends off and you'll get it nice and even. They're going to break anyway, don't worry about it. Go ahead and throw that on top of the hook shank. You want that to lay right on top of that wing. Just one, 
Two wraps, and we're good to go. Now, the last thing that I want to add are eyes to this pattern. So I'm going to add a little bit of jungle cock. You can see that that head is going to get pretty big. We've got a uh, jungle cock cape right there that you see. Beautiful feathers. Select a couple of the smaller nails. And if they're split, let me show you one of the ways that you can take a split jungle cock nail and kind of repair it for this kind of a fly. So this is a sea level cape which has quite a few splits in it. And if I have my fly tying wax right here, I can just take that nail, throw the wax on the bottom of it, and that seals the split right up. And oh, by the way, that wax used to be used years ago as a binding agent while you were tying the fly. So that wax is gonna help to hold that in place where it needs to be. Tie that on on one side. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. We'll select a, another jungle cock eye. Go ahead and seal any split that might be in that jungle clock with just a little bit of that fly tying wax. Go to the opposite side of the fly, measure and tie that one in. There you have the Lou Oatman Golden Shiner. I'll now finish off the head with a few wraps, make a nice cone shaped head. Add a whip finish to that. and finish that off with just a little drop of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. What I like to do on a, on a fly like this is I will take that Sally Hansen's, I'll put it onto a toothpick, and then I'll go ahead and use that toothpick to apply just enough to seal that thread so I don't get it all over the place. Give myself a nice little shine. Now we're not, not a fly that I'd necessarily want to frame and put on the wall, but I guarantee you if you're out fishing for brown trout, if you're out fishing for smallmouth bass, for rainbow trout, the Lou Oatman Golden Shiner from about the middle of June to about the middle of July. What a lovely pattern. It's traditional. A lot of technique behind it. Interesting to tie, but not too difficult. And a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us on Adventures in Fly Tying at Fly Fish Ohio. Till next time, tight lines.